This is MuggleCast, the Harry Potter podcast discussing everything about J.K. Rowling's wizarding world. This week's episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash MuggleCast. Welcome to MuggleCast episode 327. I'm Andrew. I'm Eric. I'm uh, Micah. And joining us this week is one of our Slug Club members and a friend of the show, Colin. Hey, Colin. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, you've been a long-time listener. Yeah, I was trying to think about it before I got on with you guys this morning. Um, I feel I definitely have memories of listening at far back as 07, because I definitely listened to you guys discuss Deathly Hollows um, on like a road nice. trip down to North Carolina I took, so it definitely 07. Awesome. Very cool. It's good to have you on. We, uh, of course, we're coming off of our great episode with Ivana Lynch. Everybody was very pleased by it, and so were we. Um, I just, I wasn't, you're never sure going into an interview, especially with somebody big in the Harry Potter world, how it's going to go, and especially all these years after she's, she was deeply involved, but mm. she is still a true fan, huh? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I wouldn't even call it an interview. I, I think it's fair to say she co-hosted the show. It, it wasn't, yeah. you know, I mean, th- at the beginning, we threw yeah. a couple questions out at her, but she really kind of helped drive a lot of the uh, discussion that we had about Newt in the last episode. Very much so. I, yeah. I know she was she was thrilled. She tweeted us afterwards, uh, and her t- in her tweet, she said, it was great to let the fangirl out of her box for, a mo- for an afternoon, uh, which is like she usually keeps, I guess, that side of herself to herself, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> which, is a cr- which is a criminal shame um, well, because she's she's great. And I think this is a reason why a lot of people like this podcast and podcasts in general is because it is a place to geek out for an mm-hmm. hour or two. Because normally you don't really have that type of venue, especially on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. So so it was great. She's a true fan. She is a true fan. Thanks for having me on immediately following her. So now I have to live up to that. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it. No her. pressure. No <laughs> pressure, Cullen. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's let's get your fandom ID. Let's learn a little bit a la- about you. What is, what is your Hogwarts house? I am in Gryffindor. And how about Ilvermorny? I'm a Wampus, uh, the rare Wampus. Nice. So sorry. Favorite favorite book? Um, dang, that's so I thought it's worse. Um, I feel like it's Prisoner of Azkaban, but Deathly Hollows is up there, very okay. close. Favorite character? Uh, Neville Longbottom. Oh really? Yeah. Did I know that? Absolutely. If I yeah, if, he's the best Gryffindor in my opinion. So. <laughs> <laughs> How about Patronus? I'm a Nightjar. It's a small little bird that sleeps a lot, so it makes sense. <laughs> you sleep a lot? Well, it's also it's like um it's kind of nocturnal, like twilight nocturnal, so not like fully nocturnal, so it stays up late but doesn't and then it's um can slow its heartbeat down and um fall asleep for extended periods of time but not quite hibernate oh so so, so, um, so you took the Pottermore test you got this assignment and then it sounds like you the, did a lot of googling yeah basically <laughs> who's your favorite fantastic beast character credence nice and the reason i asked this is because colin does some cosplay including credence you even you even shaved off your sideburns which was i impressive. yeah i shaved the side of my head <laughs> I'm devoted. Um, I will never probably do it again. My one friend, um, uh, Diana, takes beautiful photographs. I haven't met with her yet to do Credence. She did my pictures as Harry the other day um, in the forest, um, which are great. Um, But um, she wants to do Credence. But I told her I'm not shaving my head again. So (laughs) you have to fix that. It just grew back from the last time that I did it. (laughs) Yeah, they just got back. Not even joking. When I first met Colin, it was at LeakyCon, and you were dressed up as Harry Potter. I was dressed as Harry Potter, yeah. yeah. And and your friend was Hermione, and her yes. ex-boyfriend was Ron. It was a good trio. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and finally, how did you get into Harry Potter? Um, so it, had to, it was like between second and third grade for me back in 2001. Um, my parents 
um, we have family friends that lived on the same road as us and they were obsessed with it. And they were like, you have to read it. You have to read it. And I wasn't a big reader. Um, but my parents sat me and my sister down and read to us book one through three and we were hooked. Oh, wow. So I, and I got into it, um, uh, sorry, um, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the movie came out November 2001. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, and so that was, I got into it, I read the first three books before Sorcerer's Stone came out, right before. So it was right when it started building. Um, so my first memories of Harry is wearing that, like, red and yellow striped shirt on the cover of Sorcerer's Stone, not so much like the Daniel Radcliffe Harry. Mm. That's kind oh, of, yeah. So that's funny. Good. I so have you pictures. read them while, before... Yes, I read one them. through three for sure. I don't remember when I read four, but I do know I read A Goblet of Fire by myself um, because I got to the chapter where Voldemort is resurrected um, in the graveyard, and I was terrified. And I shut the <laughs> book and didn't touch it for another two weeks or something. Really? That's yeah. funny. So I don't Did remember when that was. Talk to your parents, be like, I don't know how to continue reading this. Um, I don't scared. think I don't have a memory about that, but I definitely like had that self monologue with myself. Yeah, but I def I have pictures of me dressed as Harry. Um, I was Harry Potter probably for like five consecutive Halloweens from third grade and up. Um, of me dressed <laughs> as Harry that my mom sent me because of the twentieth anniversary, so I posted those on Instagram. But yeah, oh, okay, absolutely. Yeah. We are going to talk about the twentieth anniversary a little later. Um, we didn't really have time for it the last episode, but that Avon and Lynch episode came out the same day. So that that was cool. And we actually just passed the 17th anniversary of Goblet of Fire coming out. Nice. And that that was obviously 17 is not like a special anniversary or anything, but yes, that it is, is notable. Be and get your driving permit. 17 is my lucky Goblet of Fire can start <laughs> to learn to drive. Yeah. All right. All right. Sorry, guys. Uh, but it, it it's significant to me because it was the first major midnight release party mm. for a Harry Potter book. Mm. And I was down in uh, Ocean City, New Jersey. I actually posted pictures on my Instagram the, yesterday because I got some good ones of carrying the boxes from the bookstore. And there was a little line in, in uh, Ocean City new jersey for for that book and walked down the boardwalk and started reading that night i think and of course damn that book was mammoth especially for a little kid mm -hmm. and actually today mm -hmm. i uh saw earlier on twitter is the 18th anniversary of the release of harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban oh really oh wow summer uh, unless summer. twitter's lying to me i can't imagine that it would but <laughs> no no there's well um yeah, yeah, but, but then I remember after Goblet of Fire, J.K. Rowling was like, okay, right, exactly. She said, I'm not going to set a certain deadline, just let me do this, because she has always said that she felt rushed writing Goblet of Fire. And I, is, hasn't she said that's the one she wishes yeah. she... Yeah, it's twice, as long as, the, it's twice as long as the books that are uh, preceding it, but it came out in the same timeline. I mean, yeah. that's insane. yeah. I would love to see her take another stab at that. In a way, Cursed Child is like... <laughs> yeah, I do think... I doubt any elements from Cursed Child, although I, I definitely understand the comparison. I, under, I doubt any elements were going to be in Book 4 that are later in Cursed Child, but um, I think that Book 5 was the natural reflex action to that because mm -hmm. she then decided that she's taking her time, and we ended up getting the very longest book. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. a lot of times when you're feeling like, Oh man, I'm reading book five. This book is going on and on and on and on and on. It's because J.K. Rowling needed to like process and get more stuff out that you know in a, in a more comfortable pace. I, I, so she, mm -hmm. yeah. I just think as fans that that we should be grateful for the fact that she doesn't take as long between books, like let's say George R. R. Martin, because we'd still be waiting for yeah, Order of the Phoenix probably to uh, come out. What would we be talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, as if the 20th anniversary wasn't enough to celebrate, we found out last Monday that Fantastic Beast 2 is now filming in London. Wow. We got a few Aren't you going there? announcements out of it. I am going. That's coincidental. I'm, I'm after recording. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going on a set visit now. <laughs> no, I wish. They didn't invite Hypeable last time, and I don't think they're going to do it again. Mm. They'll probably invite MuggleNet, though. Ugh. Well, we'll be WB. sure to keep you guys updated what happens on set. 
no, no, no. I don't need. Uh-huh. I have my set visit passes from Harry Potter. I wonder if those will still work. <laughs> from the Fantastic Beast set. I mean, yeah. Still say leaves then. Anyway, they confirm they're going to be filming in London, Paris, and New York, which mm-hmm. is something worth talking about right there. Yeah. What does that mean? We're going to go back to Makusa. We're going to go to Ilvermorny. We're going to. The film is just going to start off in New York when Newt's leaving. Gosh, I wish. What? Well, Newt's left. Yeah. I, I don't think it has anything necessarily to do with Newt. I, I think it probably is more focused around Grindelwald. And, right. and th- this circus, this concept art that uh, was, was posted, I think it, a day or so after the news broke about uh, filming being underway, that Mina Lima actually put together uh, for the original Fantastic Beasts. And it shows a... Right. A, a circus of different um, beasts and, and different um, characters, I guess, some of which we'll come to know. Uh, and it looks like their final show uh, was in New York prior to uh, them heading over to Europe. So I wonder, and there's some good ideas that some of our uh, patrons threw out there, how is this all going to uh, play out and start off the next movie? Yeah, well, first of all, we even we we didn't even know about this Wizarding Circus until they announced that these uh, new cast members. Um, so there's a bounty hunter called Grimson. He's not he's not um, in the circus. What is it? With um, these there's GR a wizard names? called Yusuf Kama Eskender. Mm-hmm. Oh no 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 no. Never mind. Hold on. Let me try that again. There is somebody called Skender who is the owner of a wizarding circus. And there is somebody named Claudia Kim who's going to be one of the circus's featured attractions. And but that's then, her real like, name, though. Mike is, that's... Oh, is it? Oh, okay. I'm just screwing this up left and right. Anyway, there's going to be a circus. <laughs> and we're going to see the wizarding circus owner... And one of the featured attractions. And like Micah said, there's this Wizarding Circus concept art that me and Alima did for Fantastic Beast 1. And they apparently told Snitch Seeker that that um, was pushed to Fantastic Beast 2. So, But how can a circus be involved in, well, in this story? I think it's... I think- the beasts, it might be where the beasts comes in and where this film gets its beasts fix is if they're using the beasts somehow in the circus mm-hmm. as attractions, I think that could happen. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's like a, an obvious opportunity for Newt to either, I, I want to say like either he, um, either it's like the circus is in the, in the, in the modern world where they get a lot of flack for not taking care of beasts or maybe Newt is aware of this troop of circus performers and they're like his friends, you know, like the Skender dude could be a good friend to Newt um, who actually treats the beasts fairly and is sort of like maybe uh, will help them travel incognito to, you know, throughout Europe. Maybe they go yeah. with this traveling circus. Mm-hmm. Um I do expect it to be a, a visual spectacle, though. I can't imagine Yo, yeah. what J.K. Rowling could come up with if she's putting I, together a magical circus. I can see the trailer now. I want to uh, predict something or prophesize or prognosticate that the first trailer we get for Fantastic Beasts will be whoever this Skender guy is in a voiceover giving like a world's greatest show. Welcome <laughs> to the Beast Circus. You know, a crazy thing. And we'll see some uh, special effects from like the opening number or something of this. Uh, so I can just see that being something that Warner Brothers would use to, dry, to draw people into the idea of beasts again um, mm-hmm. for this sequel. But I, I don't know that it'll be a big part of the movie. I think that New York, you know, the extent to which New York will be used is – has to basically just be for Grindelwald to break out. I don't think we'll see Ilvermorny. I think we're done with that idea, entertaining that idea. Um, and I think it'll just be Grindelwald breaks out and then the rest of the movie's in, in, in Europe. My thought about the circus thing is if it's a wizarding circus and it was playing in New York, though, it, I, don't think, I don't think they're necessarily entertaining wizards. I feel like it could be wizards in a circus but pretending to be muggles and entertaining to muggles that's a good right point. because yeah, i don't feel like good, i don't yes. feel like um makusa would allow a circus to be in the states that yeah a wizard operated circus like i feel like they're wizards posing as muggles 
entertaining two muggles. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And this wizarding, the, this concept art that, or this artwork that Mina Lima created that was supposed to be in the movie, it, it seems to be something that would be posted on the New York streets. Right. Yeah. And that would further suggest yeah. what you're saying. And if you're looking at the attractions on this uh, poster, the enchanting snake girl who's this woman who's literally like surrounded and engulfed in snakes. Oh, well, maybe she's a parcel mouth. Like exactly, she, she yeah. can control the snakes. Obviously, muggles wouldn't know or nomadges wouldn't mm-hmm. know why or how. But it's because she can, t- you know, we know she's a witch. She can talk to. How'd she do that? So I feel like that might be a plot thing yeah. there. Like maybe they have a little run in with Makusa or something. And that's like, and then obviously they're leaving the States anyway. They're going to Europe. But I also feel like this, like Eric was saying that this could be a mode of transportation for Newt. But I feel like mm-hmm. this could also be a mode of transportation for Grindelwald mm-hmm. to escape. Like he, what if he breaks out of Makusa at the same time the circus is leaving and he hides with the circus? And he joins the, the joins the circus. <laughs> Grindelwald yeah. breaks out, joins the circus. Um, I also think that this Claudia Kim actress, we didn't get a name for her role in the movie, but I think she will be Snake Girl, the enchanting Snake Girl, because that's one of the biggest characters featured in this Mina Lima artwork, and yep. um, it like like you guys said the parcel tongue thing that could fit into the film well so and parcel tongues are quite rare fitting with the uh assortment of very rare types of uh witches and wizards that jk rowling has chosen to feature in in her new movies um mm-hmm. you know there's nobody like queenie in the world and uh there's we don't know of a parcel mouth who wasn't descended from slytherin so that'll be interesting yep so they're gonna make eventually down the line when all these movies are out they're gonna make new box sets it's gonna be like fantastic piece and where to find them oculum menti Fantastic Beasts where to find them too. Oh God! Parcel tip, parcel mouth. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. gonna be like a sub <laughs> subtitles. Yeah. One other uh, idea so, though, as it relates to Grindelwald, um, that came from Elizabeth Jack over on Patreon. She said um, that she is excited to see the Wizard Circus. Maybe Grindelwald can launch an attack, as it's such a public event. <gasps> Ooh, like at the wedding in uh, is that? Apple yeah. Prince? Yeah. We'll continue talking about Fantastic Beasts 2 in just a moment. But first, we have a new sponsor to tell you about this week. ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? Or maybe look for a job easily and quickly? With ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to 100-plus job sites with just one click. Then their powerful technology efficiently matches the right people to your job better than anyone else. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you, it finds them. In fact, over 80% of jobs posted on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate in just 24 hours. Nice and quick. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Simply screen, rate, and manage candidates all in one place with ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use dashboard. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That is right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash MuggleCast. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash MuggleCast and try it for free. We also got a new synopsis for Fantastic Beast 2, and it does... (laughs) <laughs> a few weeks ago we were talking about MuggleCast and I think I was like is Grindelwald going to break out in the second movie because that seems like it would be kind of quick maybe they'll use young Grindelwald to still fit him into the story well it looks like he will be breaking out in Fantastic Piece 2 because this <laughs> new synopsis that came out to mark the start of filming says as he promised he would Grindelwald has made a dramatic escape and has been gathering more followers to his cause elevating wizards all ab- above all non-magical beings the only one who might be able to stop him is the wizard he once called his dearest friend, Albus Dumbledore. But Dumbledore will need help from the wizard who had thwarted Dum- Grindelwald once before, his former student, Newt's commander. The adventure reunites Newt with Tina, Queenie, and Jacob, but his mission will also test their loyalties as they face new perils in an increasingly dangerous and divided wizarding world. So that sounds like a good synopsis. Yeah, as as good as any, although I think it was perfectly deconstructed in a tweet that we got on the 3rd of July by Megan Rodriguez, uh, who, when it came out, 
She says, so it sounds like Fantastic Beasts 2 will start with Johnny Depp escaping prison. Haven't we seen this before? And the, the gif that's, that accompanies the tweet is, I think, the beginning of Dead Man's Chest, which is all, it's like literally that movie starts with, I think, Jack Sparrow breaking out of jail, um, played by Johnny Depp. I, mm-hmm. I agree that there is sort of a funny connection and similarity there. I certainly yeah. hope it's kind of, I don't want it to be played for laughs. I want it to be, I want us to actually be able to get insight into how specifically Grindelwald breaks out. I, I want to know about the security uh, of the vaults and things that are guarding him. And I'm guessing it would be human error that lets him out or, you know, he he confuses people or, or sort of uses his charisma, which he's famous for, to get out. But I'd like to really genuinely see, I think they have an opportunity here to show what a, a high security prison really looks like in the wizarding world and i hope it's not play i hope he doesn't have to, have to just like bribe a dog and get well, they've shown azkaban the sort of yeah they've swept in, in the they've swept that. in over azkaban yeah i mean but we do know more about that from the books mm-hmm. and it just seems to be normal cells but with the mentors floating around so what you're saying which is more... you don't want to see like newspaper headlines flashed at the beginning of the film much like the first one <laughs> grindelwald <laughs> escapes yeah Exactly. I want to see. I want to see it happen. I want it to be like, uh, you know, in a heist film when they're like, "Here's how we're going to get the money." Um, I want to see him break out like that. I want, and and you know, maybe it'll give us time. The more time spent with him, the more time uh, audiences will have to endear themselves to him and and get comfortable with the idea of Johnny Depp playing Grindelwald. If he's just this spooky boogeyman who you only see in newspaper headlines, and then again at the end of the film for three minutes, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, I'm wondering how much time has passed. In yeah. between the first movie and the second. So now that we know in Fantastic Beasts 2 he's breaking out, what is he there for? A week? A month? <laughs> a year? Because remember, we do have 20 years to span, 25 years to span over yeah. five movies. So they could jump five years ahead. <laughs> yeah. It's 19. It's 19 between the end of Fantastic Beasts and the and 1945 when Dumbledore defeats Grindelwald. It's so perfect. I feel like I read Apple. some... Sorry, Andrew. I, I feel like I read somewhere that it was only a couple months. Yeah, J.K. Rowling tweeted mm-hmm. like it's this one starts oh, okay. off a couple months, and it's and it's in, technically it's 1927 because the last one was 26, but in December. Yeah. So mm. give it a month, and it's already right. 27. And I, I'm but, looking at okay. the the concept art, and if they're going to stay along that same line, it said the last show in New York is Monday, December 13th. So. And when did if, the t- what month were we in when I Fantastic don't know. Beast One ended? <laughs> and we were December. It was the end of December. It was like it was 40s. December sixth or something. But I'm saying, yeah, it was 7th. a couple. If, if they're going to try and tie Grindelwald's escape to the circus show and then moving over to Europe, maybe they can be a little bit flexible with these dates since they didn't end up using this exact concept art in the first film. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we're, or we might pick up with this band of traveling circusmen. Uh, in Paris, uh, which I'd I'd just love to see, um, and not and not in New York. But Newt did say he was going to bring his uh, manuscript or his copy of his published book back to Tina. So maybe he's in New York doing that. Maybe Queenie and 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 Jacob are together, and she's relearning him what uh, reteaching him what he missed. Or you know, it'd be very interested in just getting back to where these characters are at and how they've grown. Uh, in in the few months, I guess, and what their arcs will be in this film has me very interested, especially with that um, that synopsis of Newt's mission in this film testing their loyalties. Like, what would be a sticking point? Let's just theorize for a moment. What's a sticking point for these characters where they won't get along with each other? Because they all seem to have like a very singular mind set to stop Grindelwald and to, to save New York in the first film. So what's going to be the angle by which they start to be divided? I don't... Well, I I wonder if the synopsis means the, those four are divided, or the Wizarding World is divided between, you know, hiding or coming out. Yeah. Isn't that... Like, that's how I read it. I read it the latter way. So the adventure reunites Newt with Tina, Queenie, and Jacob, but his mission will also test their loyalties as they face new perils in an increasingly dangerous and dividing world. But it could have, Well, Wizarding. maybe um, maybe hmm. Newt... Well, obviously Dumbledore is enlisting Newt to help, and maybe Tina or Queenie 
or who knows how Jacob's going to be involved, but maybe Tina or Queenie are resisting getting involved with Grindelwald because he's a dangerous wizard. Mm -hmm. Do you think Dumbledore is already at this point completely, like, completely has um, pushed away all of his ill feelings towards um, Muggleborns and Nomadges? Because for a while he wanted the wizards to be the strongest being, but maybe he still has a little bit of a Thor spot there. Like he still has a little bit of a, so maybe he has not such a good time meeting with Jacob at first. Maybe there's mm. some oh, Dumbledore between that. Yeah. Maybe Dumbledore is a part of this equation. as That's well. really interesting. We got a comment from Charles P on Patreon who said, personally, I'm most interested in why Albus is joining the fight so early. Um, Cause again, it is 19 years before his eventual defeat of Grindelwald. So it's interesting that Dumbledore does seem that he'll rise to prominence. Charles P. says, Personally, I feel like Albus would be rebelling against the concept of the greater good at this point in his life. He doesn't want to face Gellert and his war because that would mean confronting his potentially recent past, and he's just not ready for that. He's just a teacher, an academic right now, not a fighter, not a leader, not yet. So what really is Albus's involvement? Could it be just because Newt is involved and he feels he, he feels he needs to protect Newt? What is the nature of their history and background? How will Newt react when he finds out about the Albus slash Gellert relationship? How will this impact their relationship? It's so intriguing. Mm. I can't wait. Um... Also, about the loyalties of the main characters being tested, I always felt there was some strange connection between Graves and Tina. Could Tina come to sympathize with Grindelwald's beliefs? Not from the point of wizard supremacy, but from the point of wizard protection for muggles. Remember, she risked her career to help Credence uh, be protected. She knows what muggles or nomad people are capable of. I'm 100% sure <laughs> Tina would not join Gellert because of his fascist beliefs, but could she be briefly persuaded? Um... I'm going to stop it there. It's a long post, but uh, very interesting ideas that Tina might be a, a weak spot of some sort because she does sort of fear muggles in the same way that, that Gellert could use. Yeah, and she seems at a crossroads right now, doesn't she? Because she was recently had some issues at Makuza, yeah. and they don't respect her very much. So maybe she's trying to figure out what to do next and... Maybe she'll be torn between going and helping Newt or s redeeming herself at Makuza. Yeah. They reinstated her at the end of the film, although it happened off screen. But I think there might be. I mean, she knows. She obviously doesn't forget what's happened to her. Mm -hmm. So very interesting. All right. Well, lots to think about there. It is nice to see that they're filming already. It's a bummer that we still have to wait a year and a half before we, <laughs> we see this movie come out. But It'll be nice to know what the title is soon, too. Yeah, you know, um, calling it Fantastic Beasts Two just not sounds right. Actually, yeah, you know what? Oh, sorry. I just I just read the rest of Charles P's comment. Here's another. I need to read this because it's actually really. I, it turns out I just omitted the best part of the comment. Um, he says I also think Queenie fears her unique powers and what she may be capable of. Interestingly, so does Dumbledore. Queenie also has similar characteristics to what we know of Ariana, sweet blonde has unique internal powers that can destroy lives, could Queenie and Albus develop a bond? It would be fascinating, going back to Tina and Queenie, if these two sisters who obviously love each other form a bond with the two leading opposing figures in this war. It's a great way to develop them into complex, interesting, and relevant characters. Love to hear your thoughts. So could Queenie and Tina be on opposite sides, and could Queenie and Albus get close, because Queenie would remind Albus of his sister it's like the goldstein sisters square off in the next like yeah i, yeah. I don't that's very interesting I, yeah it's interesting i just i'm not sure i'm not sold on it mm. just yet mm -hmm. right in again convince mike more. <laughs> but no, more persuasive. we have nothing to go on yet yeah uh, i think it's more likely i like that, that. Uh, and and a couple of uh our listeners wrote in about this and and it's probably more likely that Lita Lestrange will will side with Grindelwald, and and that could be another loyalty, uh, you know, sort of plot line in the sense that we know that Newt sacrificed um, quite a bit uh, mm -hmm. for her um, to see her ultimately uh, side with his looks to be his arch nemesis for the next couple of films uh, could could hurt him a bit. I think you wait. Lita's going to side with who? Who did I say? Grindelwald. Gr Grindelwald. Grindelwald? That's crazy. Why would he, she do there's, that? Well, there's a post by Laverius. Who wants to read it? 
<laughs> You're crazy. Liberious. I'll read it, but then I'll call her crazy, too. Okay, great. <laughs> I feel as if maybe Lita may decide to join Grindelwald. She seems to be the wild card in this new story. I wonder who this bounty hunter is going to be hunting or who will be hunting him. Maybe it's Theseus who's coming after this bounty hunter on behalf of the ministry since he is an Auror. I'm also willing to bet that Tina is promoted to join the International Wizarding Police in order to help hunt down Grindelwald. The most likely target for this bounty hunter will be Newt since he helped to catch Grindelwald. I'm a little surprised that Dumbledore is deciding to go after Grindelwald this early in the series... Something may happen in this movie that will prompt him to take a step back and simply act as a chess master, placing certain key individuals in certain places to stop Grindelwald's global advance until their fateful duel in the last movie. Yes, we do know Dumbledore uh, can take things slow. <laughs> See his his uh, manipulating of Harry Potter throughout the books. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also on Lita, Elizabeth Harvey I'm really curious about the choosing of their loyalties. If Lita has some type of power or leverage over Newt, or Dumbledore might want Newt to use his creatures to help fight Grindelwald, uh, or Newt's brother might have something to do with it. Okay. I think the quartet will... Yeah, I keep forgetting about Theseus. Yeah, Theseus is in there, potentially. Um, So what was your rebuttal, Andrew? Yeah. Oh, I just can't imagine Grindelwald teaming up with... Or, or Lita taking the side of Grindelwald because he's just a really bad person, and and to betray Newt like that—that that seems she's a Lestrange. Yeah. That though. seems too far. Yeah, to be well, she's a Lestrange. You know, they get a bad yeah. rap. But mm-hmm. I, I would like to know. I'm still ever, ever more curious about what happened between them. Um, I, I, I don't the story know. Story is really expanding in a lot of ways, isn't it? The thing is, we have <laughs> five. Going five, everywhere. Five, the thing is, we have five films in this new saga, and. I don't see a problem if Lita and uh, Newt are really good friends who actually fight alongside each other in this movie and a next one. You know, if that relationship eventually goes sour, like I'd love to see Lita as this complex three dimensional, all these characters, you know, who are on his side at first and then later movies become villains. I don't want everybody to be a villain right now. Well, not Um, everybody can be good either, though. Yeah, exactly. That would make for a very boring Um, movie. I guess that's a theory, but but yeah, it yeah. Well, just one other thing to bring up though, because we're talking about a lot of characters here, and I think um, it was also mentioned this past week that a number of these um, actors, actresses were confirmed uh, notable returnees. Uh, we mentioned Lita. Um, I know Theseus got brought up as well. That was confirmed. I know Pottermore tried to make it seem like initially that there was this news that wasn't solely confirmed but that got confirmed also credence <laughs> yeah Woo-hoo. so for those who are wondering whether or not he was going to make a return and were pissed off about the fact that there was no deleted boat scene um in the deleted scene Grr. section of the blu-ray um he will be back <laughs> in some capacity and then also how about this abernathy um so eric when you were talking earlier and i know you chose him in a dueling club not that long ago uh, yeah, I'm the champion for Abernathy. Uh, so he will be back. But what's interesting there is, you know, you talked about uh, Grindelwald supporters. I'm thinking back to the end of the last movie when he's kind of giving that speech as Graves. It, it's definitely possible there are people out there um, in America who could be um, sort of wooed and persuaded by what he's he's selling. And And I think that it's not all that out there to think that. Perhaps Abernathy could be the one responsible for helping Grindelwald break out. Uh, or Absolutely. he's just there and he's going to be a casualty, a familiar face, even though we only saw him for, I don't even know, what was his screen time? Less than a minute? It was so quick. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, but, I mean, he said, oh, he said, oh, golly, so he'll be in our hearts forever. <laughs> yeah. But, but interesting that he would be there and not, uh, let, and I know we still have plenty of time here, but um, yeah. no confirmation about Serafina Pickery. Yeah, I, yeah. Hmm. It seems like a really weird mention in the press release for Abernathy to be called out. But you know what? I seem to recall that uh, Pickery's. We said this in um, our Serafina episode not too long ago, but her run as uh, president is cut short, um, or or is not very long following the first Fantastic Beast film. Although I seem to recall it might end in 1929. But she, it so does. she's president, but she won't be president for long, necessarily. So I guess if she's 
if she's president until 1929, but is not returning in this film, we could certainly see her in a future film. But it's weird that she's not on that list. Yeah. Or it, perhaps she is uh, a casualty of Grindelwald's breakout. Uh, if if we're saying that this movie yeah. ends in December of uh, 1928, right? Uh, no, it would begin the beginning of 27 if if it's only a few months after uh, the first Fantastic Beasts. So, like, she can't die in Fantastic Beasts 2 because it's not time yet for her to stop being president. <laughs> Face, according <laughs> according to according to Pottermore, unless unless Potter unless uh, America has the first ghost president, uh, for she could years. stop being the uh, the president for other reasons though. Maybe she needs to leave for some reason. Yeah, but it's we still have two years for it to happen. Whatever, so she should be. Pre- oh, she, I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, so she should be president okay. during this time. I don't. I'm very confused about that. Um, maybe they just don't want to. Maybe they think it's obvious or something. You're not mentioning it. Abernathy surprises me, Micah. I love your idea that. Um, they'll show him as a casualty because he's like the the face of the ministry for us, the general audience, you know, like because we've seen him before working at the ministry. So if you need a couple ministry people to die while Grindelwald breaks out, why not have it be him, you know, so that we have that connection and we're like, oh, OK, we get it. People who were, you know, not bad people are dead. I also like your idea of maybe him converting to to Grindelwald unknowingly or, or, or helping him because I think that ultimately is the thesis statement of these films is how a charismatic leader um, can can get people to – it was certainly featured big in, in the first film. Credence is you know just an ordinary boy who wants to be – you know wants to be his true self and Grindelwald slash Graves spends the whole film very closely manipulating him. And this is that's who Grindelwald is, and so I think it's very clear we're going to see good people, otherwise good people, uh, mesmerized by his rhetoric, and that's yeah. that's what he is. So you know, I, I mean, Abernathy strikes me as being a little bit more gullible, but I think we'll even see good, you know, real real less gullible people get pulled over to Grindelwald's cause and fight on the wrong side for a while. Yeah. Yeah. All right, maybe I'm going to be convinced with this whole Lita idea. <laughs> I, I also keep forgetting the little strange part. Yeah. Um, okay, so, and by the way, Katie, who's listening live on Patreon right now, she points out that she's only president until 1928. 28. Sorry. Okay, so not, still another not. year after Grindelwald breaks out. Mm-hmm. All right, so I think that's about it for Fantastic Beasts 2. We did learn a lot. Potter Warren made a whole bunch of posts and... There was that press release with the synopsis, and maybe we'll see some set photos. I know Dan Fogler Instagrammed himself back in the role, sporting that mustache, the iconic mustache. Everybody was very excited to see that. I missed this post. I have to look this up right now. <laughs> Do it later. Is it Mr. It's, it's Mr. Dan Fogler, right? MRDR or MRD. On Instagram? I have no clue. I'm, looking I'm pretty sure it's the same, yeah. yeah. Okay. There is uh, just one other thing I want to mention before we wrap up uh, the discussion. Uh, that Matthew Jordan, uh, one of our patrons, threw out this idea and and wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, He said that there has to be some sort of connection between Newt and Grindelwald that we don't know about. It seems peculiar that the greatest wizard of all time, Dumbledore, uh, needs someone not on his level at least twice, Newt and Harry, uh, to help him be successful. Harry shared a connection with Voldy, and Newt may have a connection with Grindy. I hope not. Yeah, I mean, Dumbledore and Newt have a connection. Dumbledore is going to be enlisting Newt to help <clears throat> with Grindelwald. So that's so. I don't think it needs to go any further than that. Yeah, I'd right. Like but his question explains... is, is why? Why is that the case? That and I think he's equating it with talent level, right? And and power. And and Dumbledore is this massively powerful wizard. Why do you need somebody on the level of Newt, much like he did later on on the level of Harry, to take down these right. dark wizards? Well, because well, we learned it. Harry was the uniquely the only person who could stop Voldemort. We knew that. So I understand he's saying, is there that connection between Newt and Grindelwald? I think Dumbledore is always also afraid of uh, resorting to using power. Yeah. Like he's always afraid of being too powerful. So I feel like that's why he always looks for someone else to assist with him like obviously harry like harry was needed 
obviously because of his true connection with Voldemort, but Dumbledore, ever since the whole thing with him and Grindelwald went down, he's always been afraid of getting to that level again and being the most powerful. And that's why he, that's why he didn't say yes to Minister of Magic and all that stuff. That's perfect. That's really, really perfect. And also, he just doesn't want to be that close to Grindelwald. Again, Grindelwald and he were really close, and it broke off. And I think he's resorting to Newt and this army and you know whoever else he uh, recruits because he himself does not want to be the one to take Grindelwald down. Um, Mm. he, it makes him uncomfortable, the idea of having to kill or duel Grindelwald again. The last time he did, his sister died. So he's getting somebody like, he's, he's getting somebody like Newt, who's very competent. I mean, yeah, not on Dumbledore's level, who is, um, but to stop, to basically go in there for him because he doesn't want to necessarily be faced with the idea that he wouldn't kill Grindelwald or stop him or, would be further, you know, t- t- taken in by gr- what Grindelwald's trying to do. Gr- gr- Albus would see himself as a as a, a weakness or like a um, a weak weak link uh, if he were to fight Grindelwald at this point. And it's going to take him, in my mind, another nineteen years to get over that and actually mm. do the deed. It's interesting. We know that when he does, Gr- yeah, go on. Uh, just that it's Newt, right? Because we know his brother's out searching for Grindelwald. Newt doesn't really you know, seek out Grindelwald. He captures him almost by chance. And so that yeah. there's this connection already established between him and Dumbledore uh, that, you know, sort of endears Newt to him is, is you know, interesting and, and want to learn more about exactly what that is. Uh, but it's But it's not like it was something, at least that we know about right now, maybe he was sent to America uh, under the cover of returning this Thunderbird to really seek out Grindelwald it's it's a possibility but mm. I, I just i've never seen that as being newt's mission or intent right like that's not what he's about so yeah that'd be horrible if like dumbledore lied again to another one of his students <laughs> to get things done <laughs> it's dumbledore's thing dumbledore's just like always like oh yeah go do this task for me but secretly you're doing this <laughs> no like, well it's not no, even I, it's not even again this is setting the 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 precedent this for is what setting the standard the precedent yeah. for that oh god i guess i guess it worked out well for dumbledore the first time so he's like oh i'm gonna do it again i'm gonna do it again with harry yeah. i think sit I think down that this... i'm about to tell you everything <laughs> oh my god i think that uh, i think that what was I even going to say? I think that uh, Newt was really in New York to really return the Thunderbird, yeah. but it but it state it brings up the the whole Theseus issue because Theseus is the one who Dumbledore should go to to fight Grindelwald if he's still in play because Theseus is the one that the Ministry of Magic has unanimously I mean I'm assuming unanimous chosen to be in charge of the Grindelwald investigation, and so this makes the case for Theseus to be taken out of the game real early. Um, almost too early, criminally early, uh, so that Newt has to be the one to step up because if something happens to Theseus, Maybe, yeah. you can bet that it, that that will be what brings Newt in. That will be what – because Newt would prefer to be in the shadows and be anonymous and, and he just wants to educate his fellow wizards gently about the treatment of beasts. He's not a warrior. That's, a, that's all Theseus. That's all his brother. But we still need to know what that special relationship was between Dumbledore and Newt. That could answer a lot of these questions as well. And it, yeah, it's likely it's tied back to his sister in in some way. Yeah, uh, which yeah. also raises a question about casting. We know that they're they're casting younger um, versions of Dumbledore and Grindelwald. Mm-hmm. What about Ariana? What about um, Aberforth? Even. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get an Aberforth. <laughs> and the little kid. Um, yeah, I think Ariana might be hopefully kept as a surprise. Hopefully they're not going to reveal that one because I think that would be a big reveal for Harry Potter fans. And I think in the press release or on Pottermore or something, they were they were hinting that there are going to be some things happening here that Harry Potter fans are going to love. I'm paraphrasing, but they, they were trying to hype up something related to Harry Potter. Mm. I like Lucas's comment in the chat here getting back to... Um, Newt and Grindelwald. It's probably just some Elder Wand thing, he said. <laughs> <laughs> just some Elder Wand thing, whatever. Let's move on to a little bit of other news. So this Monday, and by the time a lot of people hear this, it, this might be a moot discussion, um, 
J.K. Rowling is doing a new television interview in honor of the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter and to talk about her charity, Lumos, with Christiane Amanpour of CNN. Now, the thing is, in this interview, Christiane, who I love, by the way, is teasing a surprise for J.K. Rowling's fans. And there's this little clip where... The destitute here, single I'll mother who... Play it. institutionalization by 2050. She has huge ambitions and an unexpected surprise for her dedicated fans. This is a J.K. Rowling <laughs> scoop. I'm sorry. <laughs> a J.K. Out. Rowling scoop. So, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is she going to reveal something big or... Yeah. Is it... I don't know. I don't think so. It's a. It's gonna be a joke. It's sort of half joking. Oh, this is a. Yeah. Whatever we just talked about happens to be oh a J.K. Rowling scoop. Yeah, it's gonna be like something about her morning routine or something kind of like not important. And then (laughs) be like, this is a scoop. J.K. Rowling uses this facial cream. But but why? But why is Christiane? And I know some people are gonna say, oh, CNN fake news. Why is is Christiane saying a surprise for her fans? I feel like it's going to have to be something somewhat significant. I agree. My guess is Christiane's going to be like, so what are you working on right now? And J.K. Rowling will tease some new book. May not be related to Harry Potter, but I I, I don't think it's – I don't think it's – I think it's – I think it's quite possible that J.K. Rowling would tease a new book. We'll see yeah. on Monday. Gosh, did we ever find out who Florbo Lafalo was? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Speaking a... of that, uh, so J.K. Rowling, my, I had this 20th anniversary theory two episodes ago. I said, I think J.K. Rowling's going to show up in the town next to where she grew up. Uh, this Florbo Lafalo was, uh, <laughs> was laughable. Well, it turns out Florbo Lafalo is real. Oh. I mean, a real character. She, uh, J.K. Rowling did not make any surprise appearances for the 20th anniversary, though she did tweet that was that was her thing. She said, 20 years ago today, a world that I lived in alone was suddenly open to others. It's been wonderful. Thank you. And everybody was using the hashtag Harry Potter 20 on that day. Facebook had a cool feature. If you were... If you use the words Harry Potter, Slytherin, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, or Hufflepuff, you could tap the words and some special effects would happen on Facebook. That was real cool. Um, Although apparently some of the biggest Harry Potter fans I know couldn't get it to work. In fact, I think Evie couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get it to work either. See? See? So that's weird. That's that's just weird. Your I had a lot of friends it. posting it. Yeah, I had a lot of friends posting it down here too, especially with living in Orlando, being around the Wizarding World all the time. I have a lot of friends who are very yeah. connected to it, so they, they were all trying to post it too. And I had several who wouldn't, so I kept calling them squibs and stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. That's funny. Well, like I did everything. I liked Harry Potter on Facebook. I restarted the app. I made sure I. You had didn't the get it either, huh? No, I. Oh, it worked for me after that. Oh well, then what the hell? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I I thought it was Pottermore trying to get me again, thwarted by Pottermore once more. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I I I updated the app, tried Facebook app and, and the website, and none of it. But I'm glad everyone got to enjoy it who who had it. The feature is gone now too, though. If you like yeah. scroll back through your Facebook page and cl- like look for your status that you made, it's gone. Yeah, which is kind of I think sad. they only did so it, it, it kind of looks like everyone just like had a freak out moment and <laughs> just had to <laughs> just exclaim their Hogwarts house again and then posting the word Gryffindor yeah. for no reason I saw a video of it it, it looks it looked cool um, but it also speaks to the size of the Harry Potter fandom and the impact it has had on the world when Facebook the largest social network in the world with over a billion people using it I think close to two billion people at this point that they would add a Harry Potter feature for the whole world to enjoy Star Wars didn't get something cool like that. No, no other fandoms had this kind of takeover on Facebook before. So I think it's really remarkable. Mm-hmm. Well, and also you mentioned the hashtag. They added that emoji at the end of it, uh, which I don't think goes away, right? On Twitter. I look back in uh, my Twitter feed, and I still see the uh, little eyeglasses and lightning bolt show up after mm-hmm. the Harry Potter 20 years. Was it 20 years or just Harry Potter 20? Maybe both I don't either know. way they, uh, did you see it do you know what i'm talking about or no yeah yes yeah 
uh, everybody start gearing up for uh, Deathly Hollows 10, which is just a couple weeks away. Gosh. <laughs> Get your think pieces ready. Uh, Thunderpuff, who's listening live in the chat, says <laughs> her announcement is either she's pregnant or new children's book. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's done having babies, but the new children's book, we've always there was always that children's book project we heard about. The political fairy tale? Yeah, yeah. that one. Oh. And that never came about. I she still, hasn't written any children's book since Harry Potter. I still want the book about the rabbit called Rabbit. Oh yeah, her original book. Her, that she wrote the as a first kid, thing she ever I think she wrote it, but she was very, very young. Maybe she'll announce this encyclopedia. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> no. just kidding. That's been announced, retracted, <laughs> deleted from websites. So, uh, but what about? Uh, yeah, you mentioned a new book. What about the next Corman Strike novel? We know that that is that a big. Yeah, that's I know it's due. being worked on, right? So maybe maybe it's a release. Yeah, date. we have the title. Oh, we do. We have the title. We have the title, but we don't know the release date. Yeah, what the hell? That could that could be a, a big announcement. I don't think it's... I was going to say, I don't even know what the title is. Yeah, so I, I don't, I I don't either. That. I'm behind, too. <laughs> I forget as well. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I mean, she was releasing one a year, and then... So right now, we're waiting for number four. Oh, it's called Lethal White. Ooh. Oh, that's right. That's not familiar. Yeah. The name Albus means white. She's crossing. That's the big announcement. There's going to be a crossover <laughs> between Dumbledore is going to appear in. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I look forward to the interview. I'm sh- I'm sure it'll be fun to watch. Hopefully, she will um, share something signif- significant, and we will talk about it on the next episode. Is there anything else we needed to talk about today? I know we had a bunch of emails and comments here that I think we got through. Right. Yeah, everything uh, was uh, on the recent Fantastic Beast news. So a lot of good, I thought a lot of good thoughts, theories about what could possibly happen at the the start of the film with the circus there. There's a couple of interesting characters there. If you look through the concept art, I hope they actually include them. And and I wonder why, why this never made it into uh, the first movie. Do you think it would have just been too much to include? Yeah, de- yeah, definitely what we were talking about earlier with the political climate, like what Cullen mentioned too, like wizards would not be allowed to do a wizarding circus in America at this time. It, that just seems like, an, that seems like an invitation to have what happened in New York where this creature gets out and destroys half the city and risks exposure to the muggles. It seems like an invitation for that to occur. So it has to be some kind of other idea or maybe like, uh, you know, wizards in disguise, like Cullen was saying. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I don't the other the other interest. Yeah. Oh, go on. Well, where where would this have even come up though? Like inside of the uh, speakeasy that they they find their way into. I I just don't even know where this would be advertised. Yeah, maybe some patrons. It could have just been like a whole alternate ending. Oh yeah, like where we see the circus and New checks it out or something like that. Mm-hmm. Who the, knows? The movie had so many endings as it was. It did exactly. That could have been one reason why it was cut. Well, we've got enough endings here. Let's save this for number what, two. <laughs> and one thing that I find interesting about the the concept art is that it's about, or, or I guess it's really about the circus. Is that it's it's of human oddities. It's not even really beasts at the end of the day. I mean, there's some yeah, beasts in right. there, but these are more humans that seem to have these abnormalities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which Newt shouldn't mind because he doesn't want them his beasts being used for shows, I'm sure. But this could be this could actually be a group that that Grindelwald could take advantage of. I mean, you know, talking about the exposure of of the wizarding world, why not get these yeah. quote unquote freaks yeah. to join alongside him? Yeah. Like you've been outcast and be yeah, outcast exactly. no more. Kind of like the Magneto effort from the X-Men movies. Um, I will okay, say... I think you just hit on the title for the sequel, Fantastic Freaks and Where to Find <laughs> oh, Them. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> At the circus. I will say this big announcement about this, the Wizarding Circus being this thing, um, and then the name Skender, uh, reminds me a lot. There's a lot of like circus stuff going in, in, in the mainstream right now because there's this movie coming out about the founder, uh, P.T. Barnum, who did the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Uh, starring Hugh Jackman, and he—it's called the Greatest Showman, 
And it's all about the be- the beginning of the the circus. I mean, the Ringling Brothers Circus. I'm looking it up now. Started in 1884 when he joined with P.T. Barnum. It was like 1919, and they they build the Bur- Barnum and Bailey Circus as the greatest show on earth. And so the time period is very accurate for you know a wizarding equivalent of, which is why I just love when you know it shows that J.K. Rowling does her research. It's it's very time period accurate to have a circus be sort of a center of attention where hundreds of thousands of people are attending because circuses were, you know, getting in, in vogue there. They were getting really, really, really big around that time. And the sad part of this story is when I saw the trailer for The Greatest Showman, uh, somebody next to me said, well, that's oddly strange that they do this uh, big movie which could have revitalized the circus industry because on May 21st, just a few months ago, P.T. Barnum, the Barnum & Bailey Ringling, Ringling Brothers Circus closed its doors for the final time uh, in May. So <sighs> the circus is no longer a thing, folks, because low attendance and all this other stuff. But it's a well, nice to see if this animals. new film... Played a large role in that. Yeah. That's, oh, oh, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah the animal. animal thing. Yeah, well, well okay. But also, circuses are not done. It's just that that one is finished. I was actually just at a circus a, a week ago really? in, in Washington, D.C. Yeah, there were no animals, but yeah. there was... It was a big top circus with a bunch of very cool physical acts. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, so yeah. Is, could this Might be an a homage? Or two. Yeah. Could this be an homage or or a tribute to how circuses used to originally be, you know, run and yeah. and done? And I think it's also just an opportunity for J.K. Rowling to express uh, to 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 stretch her creative muscle. Mm. But but. It seems to be playing a role in this movie, of course, uh, yeah. or the story somehow. Other than like, hey, I really want to pay tribute to the circus. Yeah, I, I don't think it's that. <laughs> but there's always historical context. All right. Well, I think on that note, we should wrap it up. We have a fun segment that we just got done with getting together. <laughs> oh, thanks. So, thanks yeah. for putting it in the. Doc. I was gonna say I just saw a fun like number five fun segment question. I figured we had time uh, to do a quick make the connections. It'll never be as fun as it was last week. Sorry, Cullen, uh, with Ivana it's Lynch. But uh, but here here we have four make the connections. Uh, so um, Cullen, our honored guest, um, could you make the connection oh, between no. Harry Potter and flower crowns? Where did you get this one from? So this is we just commented on the live stream. What is a flower crown? A fl- <laughs> what? Uh, everyone like all the girls wear on their head like it's just yeah. a wreath of crowns yeah you've never seen yeah. flower crowns i'm gonna get you a flower crown micah <laughs> uh the quickest connection i could think of is just like i feel like luna would definitely wear one mm-hmm. if oh, she yeah. was around right now um yeah. um yeah i'm gonna stick with luna okay. simple yeah. simple answer for me because i can't yeah. think of anything else luna <laughs> <laughs> luna love good ladies and gentlemen there you go and ivana would make her own yeah. Yes. Oh, absolutely. absolutely she would. Uh, Micah, make the connection between Harry Potter and the horse from Tangled. Have you seen Tangled? I'll bet five dollars Micah has not I've, seen Tangled. I've not seen Tangled. <laughs> His name is Maximus. If that helps you, Maximus. Oh, see, Cullen knows. Well, do you have? Do you have an answer? Do you know the horse from Tangled? Do you know what we're talking about, Cullen? Yeah. His, his name is Maximus. He acts like a dog. Oh, he's a horse. Like a dog. He's like a horse. Acts like a dog. It's like a Disney thing. Um. A, a horse is kind of like a stag, although I know they're not the same animal. Um, and thinking of stags and dogs reminds me of the animagus of the marauders. So I'm going to say that Maximus is probably secretly an animagus of a really cool wizard like Sirius Black. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Michael um, was just about to say that. But like the words right out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. Well, I will say we, we <laughs> only had four to source... Uh, here, uh, but uh, Katie, of course, writes in with a self-serving make the connection. Connect <laughs> Rainbow Bright to Harry Potter and or Fantastic Beasts. Katie, that's um, my answer. Move on. Katie, Katie, <laughs> she she exists in both fandoms. There you go. Well, um, and and also, um, uh, Dumbledore would totally be into Rainbow Bright. Like he wouldn't <laughs> talk about it much, but. Rainbow he, he loves socks and Rainbow Bright. Rainbow Bright brings people joy. Harry he Potter probably has Rainbow Bright joy. socks. 
Yes. Probably mm. just like Katie does as well. Yeah. Uh, and the last one here, I guess I'll take, because I love this game, Harry Potter and Life is Strange. Um, Life is Strange is this beautiful game, uh, which I had for the PlayStation uh, 4. It was released last year over the course of five episodes, uh, months apart. Anyway, the connection that I'll draw is Life is Strange is about this girl named Max, not Maximus, just Max, who discovers that she has the ability to rewind time and uses it to save what turns out to be her childhood best friend's life. Anyway, well, I think... That's so easy. That's such an easy connection. <laughs> that Why was did I give connection. that one? That wasn't you a connection. Do, that was no, just the plot. I'm saying, was... like, I know, but now you're going to say what the easiest connection ever. Hold on. Let, <laughs> let's hear Colin do it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm interested. No, it's fine. It's the time turner. Like, come on. Like, stop. <laughs> it's <laughs> Preserve Azkaban. No, I was going to go with... I was going to parallel Harry, Harry's own journey into discovering that he has powers and how he handles it and how he relates to close friends and... Okay, you took it deeper. That's good. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, well. Anyway, anyway <laughs> we really appreciate uh, our patrons for the very last minute. Fun segment uh, suggestions. Hopefully you were as pleased as we were as fun. By the way, speaking of our Patreon, we actually have a little more from our conversation with Ivana Lynch over on Patreon. Yes! As a bonus MuggleCast segment, so do check that out. We appreciate your support. Um, it's 12 lots minutes. Of benefits. It's 12 extra minutes with Ivana Lynch. And awesome. Andrew asks her about Scorbus. And we get into a discussion <laughs> about. No, it's like this is a selling it's the point. Important it's, things. It's really, yeah, important it's really things. good. And we get into a long discussion about uh, Grindelwald, uh, Grindelwald and Dumbledore's relationship. So definitely worth checking out. Yeah, you know what? And, and she kind of disagreed with me about Scorbus, but. I wasn't going to argue with her about it. It's Ivana. Who am I to yell at her about it? She she knows she knows her stuff, but she was wrong. I just won't say that to her face. <laughs> but, but you'll say it to thousands of people. That's cool. <laughs> no, we just the, we just, she just yeah. You if you listen to it, you'll you'll hear me quietly breaking my stuff head. in the back. <laughs> I actually turned up the audio of you grinding your teeth, so it's very loud <laughs> on the episode. <laughs> yes, Ivana. Whatever you say. <laughs> No, I just didn't want to spar with her on the show. We had other things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we do have our voicemail line. Don't forget about that. You can get the number and all of our social media info over on MuggleCast.com. Eric, tell us about MuggleNet Live. So we are going to be at MuggleNet Live 2017, 19 years later. You will have heard us mention this on previous episodes uh, because it's going to be very exciting this September, uh, September 1st, which is a Friday night inside the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, uh, London, Orlando. Well, it's in Orlando, but the, the side of the park that we're in is the Diagon Alley London side. What you won't have had us mention, heard us mention before is is that we are going to be doing a live podcast during the event. So there's going to be some time for cast Q&A uh, in a pavilion with um, really cool guests that are attending, which we do have another announcement on that. But at the end of it, we will be doing uh, sort of a, a, a live mini muggle cast in the park before going over to enjoy our unlimited butter beers and uh, ice creams. So really exciting news uh, that we'll be doing that during the event. Um, and the announcement that we have for cast members is uh, actually Sean Biggerstaff, who played Oliver Wood, is going to be uh, in attendance with the rest of the cast who are going to be there. Um, this is actually his first appearance for Potter in the U.S., he mentioned, so this is pretty big news, and uh, I think he might uh, teach us how to play Quidditch, which is easy enough to understand. So... <laughs> um, I'd be pretty excited. So uh, w the whole thing is we have a discount code when selecting your ticket order for MuggleNet Live. Enter code MuggleCast at the checkout to receive $10 off your order. And you can read more about the event in our post about it at the top of the MuggleCast website and use the link there to visit MuggleNetLive.com. It's a really cool event. You will be uh, ashamed if you do not if you do not make it. And we will all wow, be there. Wow, ashamed. Ashamed of ashamed. Well, it's so 19 years later. This is the date that the epilogue in Deathly Hallows occurred, September 1st, when Harry puts his kids on the train. And we're going to actually be able to ride the train uh, between <laughs> between London and Hogsmeade. And back. I'm not going to so. do that. I'm just going mm -hmm. to drink beer. <laughs> you're going uh, to hang you out with should, you guys should do a live. You guys should do a live reenactment of the first scene from Chris Child. 
What is the uh, first scene from Cursed Child? The, the, the like house the whole, assignment? No, it's like the whole, like, get, putting them on the train stuff. Oh, it's all the 19 yeah, years oh, yeah we have a script. Yeah, we can do that. Right. So we can... <laughs> we have the script. Are you recommending we dibs just on Jenny. Uh, borrow dibs, some, dibs on Jenny. some kids that are in the park for the night? <laughs> yeah, we'll just say... No, you know what? The children will be there. Uh, yeah, because young. you have young... You have um, Albus Potter, right? If, yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll get it together. We'll do a reenactment. That'll be cool. Excellent. <laughs> Good stuff. Actually, and um you know, I forgot about this. The the final edition of Cursed Child is coming out July twenty fifth. <laughs> so we can bring our new copies of the book. There's actually gonna be a uh, and... Cursed Child bonfire taking place. Uh, oh come on! <laughs> I'm tired of being mean about on curse, hating on curse. As every Grindelwald just, comment, I everyone think Grindelwald. throws their books up at the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Actually, that's to a great see the idea. books burning as they fall. <laughs> yeah, then we can just have burning. Uh, <laughs> oh no! No, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, somebody right, listening is going to try that. Yeah, we're going to get ourselves in trouble. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We appreciate your support and for being a listener. Colin, thanks for joining us. It was great yeah, having you on. Thanks for having me. Probably see you in Orlando this September. Hopefully. I'll be Colin here. Colin was thinking I of running over to King's Cross, the real King's Cross, yeah. in September 1st. But... I definitely could go, but then also my parents are coming like the week after, so that'll be like two weeks off of work and, and plus yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. money, you know. A but short, it's a, it's a holiday it. weekend, so come on. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, next 19 years later. <laughs> and 98 19, years, more years later. Through. Yeah. <laughs> I finally made it to London. Yeah. You know people are going to be doing that. Oh, absolutely. I already know a couple people that are doing it. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Andrew. I'm Eric. I'm uh, Micah. And I'm Colin. Bye. Bye. Bye.